Today's topic is 6.2, Sum, Difference, and Double Angle Identities, found on pages 299 to 308 in your text. Our curriculum outcome is 30.5, where we need to demonstrate understanding of trigonometric identities. Our lesson objectives, number one, we need to learn why there's a need for sum, difference, and double angle identities. Number two, we need to learn the sum, difference, and double angle identities for sine, cosine, and tangent. And number three, we need to apply these identities to solve different types of problems. So we'll start with a question. Um, is sine of 60 plus 30 the same as sine 60 plus sine 30? So to answer that question, we'll just you know, go to our unit circle. And so what we've got here is uh, we're looking for sine 60 plus 30, which we know sine 60 plus 30 is the same as saying sine 90. So is that gonna be the same? We'll just put a little question mark over top of the equal sign as sine 60 plus sine 30. <clears throat> So sine of 90 is our second coordinate on our unit circle. Sine is always second coordinate. So we're saying one. So is one equal to sine of 60? Well, sine of 60 is root three over two plus sine of 30, and that's a half. So hopefully you can recognize that root three plus one over two is not the same thing as one. And so that means that it's not the same which means that sine of 60 plus 30 is not equal to sine of 60 plus sine 30. What this means is that the distributive property, distributive property being just applying this sign, the sign does not apply to both the 60 and the 30. It doesn't apply to trig functions. So this means that we need to use other identities when we're asked to find the sum and difference of the sine cos tan of two angles or sine cos tan of a double angle. So here are our identities. Um, we're gonna start with our sum identities and I'm just gonna click on them and list them. You can pause the video and write them down. Now, where these identities come from, it takes a long time to derive them. I'll do that in a different video for now. These are the identities that you need to use to answer the questions that we pose today. So you can see there's three different sum identities, one for sine, cos, and tan. There are different identities, also for sine, cos, and tan. And then there's some double angle identities, also for sine, cos, and tan. All right, so here's our first example. It says, write each expression as a single trigonometric function. So the first expression is cos 88, cos 35, plus sine 88, sine 35. And our second one is 2 sine, pi over 12, cos pi over 12. So what you're going to do is you're going to look on your list of identities. You should have, writ have them written down all in one spot. And we want to see which identity looks a lot like the one um, that they've given you. So cos 88, cos 35, sine 88, sine 35. And when you do that, you should see that this part here looks an awful lot like this part here. Cos, cos plus sine, sine. So that means that cos 88, cos 35 plus sine 88, sine 35 is really the same as cosine of these two angles subtracted. So 88 minus 35. And so that means that we're looking at cosine of 53. And that's it. So we're just, this is just um, getting you used to using your identities to make some substitutions, which is a huge thing in um, trig identities. So our second one is two sine pi over 12, cos pi over 12. Looking at your identity sheet, you should see that it looks an awful lot like sine of two angle or sine of two A. So this is a double angle identity and that gives you two sine alpha cos alpha. So two sine pi over 12 cos pi over 12. So really we are looking at two sine and the A part is pi over 12. And we can simplify that into sine of pi over six. All right, here's our second example. It says determine an identity for cosine 2a that only contains the sine ratio. Well, right now, cosine 2a is equal to cos squared theta, or cos squared a, I guess in this case, minus sine squared a. So we are partially the way there. It says that this identity can only have sine in it. This one also has cosine. So what we need to do is we need to remember older identities as well. So remember the original identities were cos squared alpha plus sine squared alpha or a sorry is equal to one so we've got cos squared a we need to get rid of this cos squared a so we need to manipulate 
this identity right here by solving for cos squared a. So cos squared a is gonna be equal to one minus sine squared a. So really all we're doing is just making substitutions. So since cos squared a is equal to one minus sine squared a, that means that we can put in one minus sine squared a here, and we're still subtracting that sine squared a. So we end up with one minus two sine squared a. So you need to remember the old identities, so the eight fundamental ones that we talked the other day, and you need to be able to manipulate identities in order to make substitutions. All right, another example. It says simplify the following expression to one of the three primary trigonometric functions. And it's sine 2x over cos 2x plus one. So here's where you really need to just know your identities and the important thing is you have to start the question before you can actually finish it. And all that means is that you need to start making some substitutions and then trying some things. If you don't try it, you'll never be able to finish it. So sine 2x. Well, we know from our identity list that sine 2x is the same as 2 sine x cos x. And that cos 2x is the same as cos squared x minus sine squared x and we still have a plus one. Now it says that I'm gonna try and simplify this to one of the three primary trig functions and those are, that's sine, cos, and tan. So I don't wanna make any substitutions that are gonna um, add anything but sine, cos, or tan into this thing. So after pondering for a bit and trying some substitutions, I came up with this solution that I will make a substitution for the number one because the number one is also cos squared x plus sine squared x. So here's one of our original identities. And if I make a substitution for one and put in cos squared x plus sine squared x, I'm just gonna see what happens. So this is a multi-step question. You can't look at it and get the answer in, you know, half a second. You have to try some stuff. So in trying this stuff, I see that this negative sine squared x and this positive sine squared s x cancel off. So we'll see what happens after we simplify the bottom. And in, on the bottom now, since these two things have canceled off, I get cos squared x plus cos squared x, which is two cos squared x. Now it's time for some more simplifying. So you need to know how to simplify fractions. Well, these twos cancel out, so that's good. We have a cos x on the top and we have a cos squared x on the bottom. So that cos x will cancel off one of those cos x's and I'm left with sine x over cos x, which is the same thing as tan x. And lo and behold, I have simplified this expression um, to one of the three primary trigonometric functions, but notice that it took me a number of steps and I didn't stop simplifying. I just kept on going. So you have to start the question, make some substitutions. You might have to start it again if, if it doesn't work out, but you have to try all your options before you give up on it. So our final example says, use a sum or difference identity to find the exact value of cosine of 165. So one of the words that pops out at me is this concept of an exact value. And if you remember, exact values are root signs and fractions. And where do we see root signs and fractions? On our unit circle. So we need to use a sum or difference identity to get to these exact values. Well, sum or difference means that we have to use one of our new identities and we're talking about cosine of 165. So we're trying to find ways to get to the angle of 165 by using angles that are on our unit circle. They could be in the first quadrant, quite often they are, but they could also be in the second or third quadrant. So when I tried it, I came up with this, that cosine of 165 is the same as cosine of 135 plus 30. So 135 degrees plus 30 degrees gives me 165 degrees. Using my sum identity for cosine, because I used uh, two angles added together, I get cosine 135, cosine 30, minus sine of 135, sine 30. Now the best thing about using angles that are on the unit circle is that they are all have root signs and fractions associated with them, which will allow me to get this exact value. So I need to find cosine of 135. Cosine of 135 has the same coordinates as cosine of 45, but a different sign because of the cast rule. And we're talking about quadrant two where sine is positive and cosine is negative. 
So cosine of 135 is the same as cosine of 45, but negative. So I get a negative root 2 over 2. Cosine of 30 is root 3 over 2. So I'm just taking these values off my unit circle. So it'll be handy to have your unit circle around. Sine of 135 has the same sign as for, sine of 45 degrees, so that's just a root 2 over 2. And sine of 30 is a half. So I can just use, that should be some brackets here. I can just use some multiplying of radicals to get to the next step. So I get negative root 6 over 4 minus root 2 over 4. Well, we're just talking about two fractions and we're subtracting. We have a common denominator, so our final answer is negative root 6 minus root 2, all divided by 4. So, this is just to show you that you need to know your unit circle, exact values are found on the unit circle, and you need to be able to find an angle as a combination of two other angles. You might be asked to use a double angle identity. This question specifically said sum or difference, so I used a sum identity but you need to be able to find combinations by adding or subtracting or multiplying so we can use some of these identities and then use the unit circle to get those values. Okay, so in summary, there are special identities for some difference in double angle identities. Number two, you need a strong understanding, which means you have to practice, means you have to do questions to practice, of the eight fundamental identities as well as the sum difference in double angle identities and the unit circle. So have your unit circle handle handy whenever you're doing a question. You need to start a question in order to finish a question, and you might have to start it more than once. Okay? Don't get discouraged. You'll eventually get to the answer. And if the question asks for the exact value as an answer, you need to use fractions and radicals, and you find those fractions and radicals on the unit circle. So have that handy once again. Your assignment page is 306 to 308. Uh, good luck, and we'll see you in class.